Hello, this is Pastor Sam Velez, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for our service. We hope you enjoy this message today, that it blesses your life and your families. We love you. The title of my message is, it's the help I have. It's the help I have. I don't know about you, but... Uh, for some of us, sometimes when we're trying to work on something, uh, we don't always want to show that we need help because we want to seem like we got it together. You know what I mean when you say like, oh, no, no, I got this. Don't worry. It's like super heavy and you're breaking your back, but you're like, I got this. Or if you're single in the room and you want to impress somebody, you're like, and you're showing, you see a girl and you're like, ah, I got this. And you're, you're just sweating and you're, you're, you're red and whatever. And sometimes we, as humans, we tend to think that we got it. And sometimes we do have it, and sometimes we don't, and we need help. And that's why it's, it's important. That's why people try to encourage others, hey, if you need help, say something. If you need help, ask for it. And, and I wanted to bring that subject because the Holy Spirit, the Bible describes the Holy Spirit is, as a help as well. Jesus was telling the disciples, he said, hey, I'm going to leave, but I'm not leaving you alone. There's going to be some help for you. Jesus knew that the disciples were going to have to face certain things. The disciples were going to have to speak into certain areas. There was going to be an attack from the enemy. The Roman government was still there. There was still an oppression among the church. There were still religious people that did not like what was going on. And so Jesus said, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave you a person that's going to help you in the midst of all of this. That's why when you read the, the New Testament, you see that the people of God, although they are oppressed, attacked, beaten, they triumph everywhere anyways. There's victory anyways. Peter, Paul, and all the disciples, although they were attacked and oppressed, the Spirit of God was still at work. Because nobody, now, no man can ever stop the work of God in your life. No matter how hard they try. I want to encourage you with that today because sometimes what happens is we allow situations and we see things through a lens and it affects us. And because it affects us, we don't want to try anymore. We don't want to do that anymore. We don't want to go there anymore. We don't want to open this anymore. Why? Because of the enemy. And the enemy is under our feet. Amen. The enemy is under our feet. And he has no victory over you today. And those of you watching online today as well. Don't allow the enemy to speak lies into your spirit to make you think otherwise. To make you think that it's over. To make you think that it can't be done. Because that is a lie of the enemy. And if we're not careful, we will speak like the enemy. We'll speak like defeated people. We'll speak like people that have nothing on the inside. If you have, if you have your Bibles, I want to open up with this in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, 16 and 17. If you want to go there really quick. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Jesus said this. He said, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Jesus is telling the disciples, the Holy Spirit is present with you right now. But when he comes and he baptizes you in the book of Acts, he's in you. Remember I said it last week. Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was on a person. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is in a person. And works through a person. Jesus was present. The Spirit was present on them to do miracles, to do all these things. But Jesus said, man, when the Holy Spirit comes on your life, man, it's different when it's in you. It works different, operates different. Why? Because now when you speak, now when you stand, now the way you live, it doesn't come from an outside source. It doesn't come from a, a moment where the Holy Spirit comes upon you. No, it comes from within. And it doesn't stop. Because in the Old Testament, remember I said last week, if you were here, that the Holy Spirit would come on certain moments and the people would be filled with the Spirit and they would do these extraordinary things. The Bible will talk about the Spirit, the Spirit of God came upon them and they began to prophesy. The Spirit of God came upon them in this. The Spirit of God came upon them. And it was like in certain moments. But now Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit's in, in you. So that means that it's not just for a moment, it's for a lifetime. 
It's not just in the hard moments, like it's just for this moment, the only, that's, it's a hard moment, so that's when the Holy Spirit, no, no, the Holy Spirit's at work every single day of your life. And what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit speaks truth into your life. Jesus said it, that the Holy Spirit would come to speak truth. He was going to send the advocate, and it was going to speak truth. The Holy Spirit will never speak a lie in your life. You know it's the Holy Spirit at work because the truth aligns with his word. The Holy Spirit will never lead you into a place that would affect you. The Holy Spirit will never lead you in a place that would hurt you. The Holy Spirit speaks truth into somebody. Speaks truth. There is no lie in the prince of God. The only time that we can experience a lie is from the spirit of hell. From the devil. When the devil speaks lies, that is where things get twisted. Jesus faced the devil for 40 days. And when he was fasting, what happened? He answered the devil with the word of God. He responded with the word of God. Adam and Eve were affected. Why? Not because they did not have God, but because they listened to a truth that was not real for them. They lost the dominion they had. They lost what God had given them because they believed a lie that did not come from God. And because they believed a lie, they experienced the fall. And we experience it now. Every time me and you give way to the Spirit, give way to the devil, give way to something outside of God, we experience pain. We experience discouragement. We experience defeat because we believe the lies of the enemy. Telling you that you can't. Telling you that it's not going to change. Telling you that it's over. Telling you that it just, she's always going to be like this. He's always going to be like this. Telling you that, man, this is just the way it has to be. Those are lies from the enemy that come into your life and make you believe something that's not true. So then we respond that way. But when the Spirit of God is at work, it will speak the truth of God into your life and it will let you know how awesome your God is. I was, I, when I was getting ready for the sermon, I was trying to because I, I was, I'm still on in this... Um, in this Peter mode, I know we talked about Peter last Sunday, and I was like, I was trying to avoid this Peter thing, but I really, the Lord led me back to Peter's life again. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to go, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about the truth of who God is, I want you to go to Acts chapter 3, 12 through 16. The Holy Spirit speaks truth, right? And the Holy Spirit speaks the truth of who God is. Peter had just healed a lame man that was at the gate called Beautiful. And um, this is the aftermath. It says this. They were, they were getting after him. They were coming against him. And Peter saw, the Bible says, Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is it so surprising about this? What is so surprising about this? Why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought you glory to this servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected his holy righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you now know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. When Peter does, as he performs this miracle, the Bible says that they were questioning him. And Peter saw the opportunity to speak the truth. To let them know who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is. To let them know who God is. To let them know that that God that you tried to crucify is the one that raised, is the one that heals. 
to let them know that the lies that people want to put about Jesus, the lies that they want to do, they, they wanted to downgrade Jesus, they wanted to shut them up about it. No, no, no. His truth trumps everything else. And it lets me and you know that whatever you are physically dealing with and whatever you have something, whatever you have coming against you, there is a truth about God that goes beyond that. There's a truth about God that goes beyond sicknesses. There's a truth about God that goes beyond broken relationships and broken marriages. There's a truth about God that supersedes everything else. It's that God is a miracle working God. There's nothing too hard for God. I don't know what you came in with. I don't know what you're tuning in for. But there is nothing that is too hard for God. You have to believe the truth of who God is for your life. Because if you do not believe who God is, you will never experience what God does. That's why there's moments where you have to to remind yourself. You have to remind yourself. When you're feeling defeated and you're feeling that, God, I can't do this. It won't happen. I can't shake this. You have to remind yourself of the power of God. You have to remind yourself that Jesus didn't rise from the grave so that you can be stuck and defeated. So that you can be hurting. So that you can be a slave to sin. No, no, no. You have to remind yourself. He had to remind the people. He's like, hey. What we did shouldn't be a surprise to you. He's like, hey, all this that you're talking about and you're complaining about is because it's that Jesus that healed this lame man. It's by the name of Jesus. Because in John, I mean, Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were going to go pray. And the Bible says that there was a lame man asking for money. And Peter yells at him and says, hey, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And he picks him up, and the man is healed in that moment. That's what they were talking about. He says, in the name, in the faith in Jesus, the Bible says, that man was healed. It was the Spirit of God at work in them. It was the truth of God at work in them. Jesus was no longer present in Peter's life and in the disciples' life, but they had the truth of God. They knew how God worked. They knew that when you add God to the mix of what you're going through, something great has to happen. Some sort of transformation has, something has to change. When you've tasted the presence of God, it's very hard to go back to anything else. When you've experienced the presence of God, it's hard. You can try to go back to anything else. You can try to go back to your old life. You can try to do old things. It just won't hit the same because God did a change in you. God broke the curses in you. God broke the strongholds. And you can't be the same. Remember I said last week, Peter, Peter, you're reading a different Peter. He's not the same Peter. He can't be the same Peter because of the transformation of the Holy Spirit in his life. So when the Holy Spirit speaks truth to your life, it speaks truth of who God is, and it also speaks truth to who you are in him. Who you are. The Bible says this. I want you to go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through, I might stop at 10. If not, if I feel like going, keep going, I'll keep going. But Romans chapter 8, 1 through 10 for now. It says this. It says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like, a, like the bodies of the sin, we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that, just, that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer, 
who no longer follows our sinful nature, but instead follows the Spirit. Those who are dominated by the, by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. I'm going to keep going. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you, do, you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Paul writes this in the book of Romans and he gives us the identity that we have by the Spirit of God. He says there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And then he ends it by saying, me and you in Christ are children of God and we are heirs of his glory. That means that everything that God has for us belongs to us. And he says by the Spirit of God, you're no longer a slave to sin. The only time that you can ever be a slave to anything is the choice you make to cooperate with it. The only time that you can ever feel condemned is you condemning yourself. There's a difference, church. When we're condemning sin and we're condemning a person. Condemning sin is calling sin for what it is and talking about it and speaking against it. Condemning a person is totally different. It's destroying who they are. It's destroying that God created them in the image of, they were created in the image of God, the book of Genesis says. And when we, the Holy Spirit is speaking, the Holy Spirit tells me and you what, who we are in Christ. That's why I'm so against people that speak defeat every single day. I can't stand it. Because the Bible says a different story. The Bible says I'm an heir to the throne of God. The Bible says I'm a child of God. The Bible says that the God's glory is my glory. The Bible says that there is no sin that can make me a slave. That if I walk by the Spirit, I carry the power. That His life lives in me. There is not no situation, no devil, nothing that can stop the work of God in your life. But the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit speaks truth, it's who God is, and I don't know who I am. That's why I walk different. That's why I believe different. That's why when we pray for people, that's why whatever it is, we, we, we do this because of the spirit of the Bible says that when Jesus Christ raised to life, his life-giving spirit comes in us, which allows us, allows me and you to live differently, to speak differently, the moments where you feel like the enemy is attacking your life. And you feel like, man, this is, this is a tough thing that I'm going through. Remind yourself of who you are and who you belong to. Remind yourselves that when, that when the devil wants to make you a slave to sin, the Spirit of God comes and sets you free. And you are no longer who you used to say you are. You are a son and a daughter of God. You're more than what you think you are. You're more than the word you say 
but yourself. So the Spirit of God speaks truth. Number two is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit gives us not only the truth, but the Holy Spirit gives us boldness. Boldness. If there's one thing that the church needs more than ever is boldness. We, not, we may not be oppressed by Roman government and all these things, but there is an oppression. There is things that are happening in government that are trying to infiltrate homes and the education system. That's why I pray for public school teachers all the time. Because I know what's going on. And I know what they're trying to throw in every single time they can. But the Holy Spirit is not a respecter of anybody. The Holy Spirit doesn't care who's on, who is the president, who's on the throne. The Holy Spirit has, a, has the truth that we need to speak about. It's a boldness, church, that we carry. Peter would have never been bold the way he was. You want to know why? Peter was broken. When he denied Jesus three times in the Gospels, it broke him. The Bible says, because when we read the Bible, we think like, oh, he cried, like he felt bad for denying Jesus. No, no. The Bible says that he wept, like bitterly. In other words, he was so broken by what he did to God and to Jesus by, by denying him. He was so broke. He was broken. Judas had a moment also where the conviction came, but Judas handled it very differently that God never intended. Judas killed himself. Peter didn't, but Peter was broken. Peter was depressed. Peter was probably like, man, I can't do this. And the Bible says that at the end in the Gospels that Jesus restores him. And he gives him his, he reminds him of his purpose. He says, hey, go feed my sheep. He tells Jesus, do you, Jesus asks him, do you love me? And Peter kind of gets bothered after the third time because he's like, Jesus, I, I do love you. He's like, then feed my sheep. He, he, he restores him in that moment. And the Holy Spirit comes on the people. Peter has the boldness to preach. And now Peter, he, he's on a tangent. He's not just preaching the gospel and 3,000 people are getting saved. God's using him to, to pray and he would see people healed. And God's using them to speak against anything that comes against the word of God. Then we have your Bibles. I want you to go to Acts chapter 4. We're going to be in verses 1. Acts 4, 1 through... I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. It says this. It says, while Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard the message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. Remember, 3,000, now they have 5,000, 2,000 more people getting saved. The next day, the council of all the rulers and the elders and the teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or on whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene. The man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stones that you builders rejected now has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. I want to stop there. I want you to, I want, I don't know if you saw this. The Bible says that Peter being filled with the Holy Spirit stands up to what they were going against. 
And he tells them again one more time, it is by Jesus this man is saved. He's telling them, you're getting upset because we healed a crippled man? And you're getting upset about this? And he tells them, let me tell you what's going on. And the Bible says that Peter and John carried a boldness to speak against these people. The boldness to speak against what is wrong. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it gives you a boldness that you didn't have before. Maybe before you were kind of worried to step up on certain people's toes. Maybe you were worried to call someone out by what they were doing. And then here's the thing. It's not to call them out so that you can have this argument on Facebook and we could all watch with popcorn and just like, oh, man, that's awesome. I'm loving this. Let me add a comment. Yeah, you should have, you know, just making it go far. No, no, no. Peter was speaking against oppression to what Jesus was trying to do. He had the boldness to say, hey, this isn't the way it's going to go. And I'm not going to do, the Bible says, if you keep reading chapter 4, he tells them, should I listen to you over God? Of course not. And this is like the, this is what the Bible says. I'm sure old Peter, Peter would have been like, should I listen to you over God? H-E double hockey sticks. No, I wouldn't. That's what Peter would have said. He's a new man. He said, of course not. I listen to God. And the reason why I bring this up and why the Lord put it in my heart is because we have to be a church. We have to be a people of God that has the boldness to speak about sin and has the boldness to call things out. Can I tell you something, church? No government and no culture is going to tell me what gender my daughter is. And nobody's going to make me say something that goes against what God has already said in his word. We live in a world, church. You read it all the time. You see it on social media. Trying to make people conform to the image that they want instead of who God called us to be. But I'm thankful that by the Spirit of God, you that are in here and those watching online, God's raising up a different kind of people. A people that's not going to put up with the stuff that happens out there. A people that's going to stand with the Word of God through the test of time. Regardless of what happens after we speak. There's a difference, church, when the Spirit of God is at work and you're able to speak in love and speak against things that are coming against what God has already said in His Word. You get a boldness. And not just a boldness against culture, but you gain a boldness even within your own context, whether it's your job, whether it's family, whether I have, there's 412 students in this room or, or children or wherever, young adults. It gives you a boldness to speak into the most simple things that don't align with the Word of God. It gives you a boldness to say, hey, this is where we draw the line. Hey, and you speak life into somebody. The difference between Peter and John and us today is that Peter and John will get arrested for stuff like this. We still have our freedom without having to be worried about, man, are they going to arrest me if I say this or do this? That's the difference. But the Holy Spirit gives you a, a, a boldness that you couldn't have before. A boldness to speak to what's right. A boldness to speak not only to what's wrong out there, but to what the devil's trying to do in your life. To speak against the lies of the enemy. To speak against, you know what, devil? Whatever, and you command that thing to go. You command things to go because words create the worlds we live in. The Holy Spirit gives you the ability to speak into that with boldness. Speak into whatever. Peter and John, what they do? They saw a lame man. By the power of the Holy Spirit, they spoke to the man and they commanded him to walk.
The Bible says that they perform many miracles. You read throughout the Bible, they speak to the devils and they call people that are demon pests to call them out. It's not like in the movies, Russell Crowe or whoever that you've seen lately with the cross there and they're just like a lightsaber with the cross. It's none of that. The Bible gives you the power to speak to it and something has to change. It's a boldness. The Holy Spirit gives you a boldness to speak into that. For some of you, maybe today is the first day that you say, you know what? When you're praying today, say, God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, no spirit comes into my home. Because the spirits cannot contain, they can't stand the name of Jesus. They won't. But when we read stuff like this in the Bible, and it resonates with us, and we're like, man, I love that. You have to remember that Peter and John, the disciples, and later you'll find out, if you haven't already, Paul, all of them walking in step with the Spirit started because they understood the simple thing that the Spirit of God wants to be wanted. The Spirit of God is available to anybody, but you have to want the Spirit of God. It starts by seeking him daily. Seeking him. It starts by, by you being in sync with the Spirit. The Word of God. Meditating on it daily. Those two things. Acts chapter 3. People miss it all the time. But before that miracle ever happened, what were the disciples going to do? They, what they were doing. They were going to go what? Pray. Which tells me and you that just because you receive the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you'd stay disconnected from the Spirit of God. They were still connecting to the Lord. They were still engaging that's why we do prayer nights because it's we're nothing without the spirit of God we need to connect they stayed in step with the spirit Acts chapter 4 if you keep reading on verse 23 the church prays for courage they heard about what was happening and they began to pray and you know what was, you know what was their prayer at the end I think it was 431 they said Lord stretch out your hand stretch out your hand so that you can give us a boldness so we can do see signs, wonders and miracles he says stretch out your hand on us I don't know about you but I want the Lord to stretch out his hand upon, on me on my life so that I could have boldness so that I could have courage so that I could see God's miracles and signs and wonders, things that I would have... Th you know what a wonder is? It's something that makes you wonder, like, how did this happen? It's like if you stood out there in the rain, you said, in the name, I, like Jesus said, be still, and it just stops. That's like a wonder, like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? Lord, would you stretch out your hand? Thank you so much for joining our service and for listening to us. We are located at 4519 East Del Mar Boulevard in Laredo, Texas. And we hope that you continue to be a part of our ICM family.